to overcome negative thinking and emotions and sins. Jinsi unavyoweza kushinda hisia kinyume na pia vile jinsi unavyoweza kushinda dhambi. Now generally these are separate lessons. Aha, hapo nyuma yalikuwa ni mafundisho mawili tofauti. But because of time we combine it. Lakini kwa sababu ya muda sasa itabidi aweke pamoja. Last session we talk about how not to be affected by people. Kipindi kilichopita tumezungumza jinsi ambavyo usije ukaadhirika na watu. And now we talk about how to overcome negative thinking, negative emotions and sins. Lakini sasa kwenye kipindi hiki tunataka tujifundishe jinsi ya kushinda mawazo ama hisia kinyume na pia jinsi ya kushinda dhambi. Now the Bible has told us that that uh, in Proverbs 4:23, maandiko yametuambia katika Mithali 4:23, Mithali 4:23, Mithali 4:23, Mithali 4:23, Mithali Above all things guard the heart because from the heart the well spring you know that it, the whole life comes from your heart. Ya kwamba ukaulinde moyo wako kwa sababu mambo yote yanatoka kwenye moyo wako. If in our heart we have lot of unhappy feelings. Kama ndani ya moyo wako una hisia ambazo sio nzuri or think that the world is not fair ama unawaza kwamba hata dunia hii sio nzuri. Now the world is not fair. Ndio dunia sio nzuri. So if we are overwhelmed by it lakini kama wewe basi utavuti, utavutiwa na dunia or overcome by sin ama wewe dhambi zije zikushinde the whole life will be destroyed maisha yako yote yataharibiwa i have to say this many children grow up nataka kusema hili ya kwamba watoto wengi huwa wanapo wanapokuwa kujifanya watu wakubwa not with a lot of love wao wakiwa wadogo wanakuwa na upendo mwingi is too bad that many parents didn't realize it's important to say loving words to the children. Nani jambo mbaya kwa sababu wazazi wengi walisahau kuambia watoto wao maneno ya upendo wakiwa wachanga. Now it's true that the children sometimes disobey the parents. Ndio ni kweli wakati mwingine watoto huwa hawatii wazazi wao. But many parents have not learned how to guide the children. Lakini wazazi wao pia wamesahau jinsi ya kuelekeza watoto wao. Instead they spank the children. Badala kuelekeza wanawachapa kofi. And they say you are no good. Wanawaambia yeye sio watoto wazuri. Bad things will happen to you. Mambo mabaya yatawatendekea. And when the child grows like that, he will have low self image. Mtoto anapoendelea kuwa katika hiyo katika hayo mazingira kupigiwa kelele basi atakuwa mtoto mbaya siku zinazofuata. He will think that he's useless. Ye, atajijua kwamba yeye sio wa muhimu. He will think that people don't like him. Ijapo kwa watu hawampendi. That he cannot do great things. Ataelewa kwamba yeye hawezi kufanya chochote chema. Let me ask you here. Hebu nikuulize swali. How many of you grew up in a family that gives you a lot of love? And you feel good and happy to be alive because of the of your family. Ni wangapi wakati mlipokuwa watoto wachanga mulilelewa katika mazingira ya upendo yani mlikuwa mnapendwa zaidi hakukuwa na kupigwa pigwa hakukuwa na kupigiwa kelele yani mlilelewa tu hivi kama mayai. Can you raise your hand? How many of you grow up with a lot of love? And you feel happy? Ya kwamba wewe ulilelewa vizuri, haukuona matatizo. How many? How many? Okay, a few. Okay, let me ask you a second question. Wachache, hebu tuulio swali lingini. How many of you have been hurt so many times by people? Basi ni wangapi ambao wamejeruhiwa na watu pipindi vingi katika maisha yao? There's some time you Oh, you raise your hand. Okay. So, let me ask you. Do this hurt affect you now? Je, kule kujeruhiwa ambako ulijeruhiwa pale nyuma, je, bado saa hizi kuna kusumbua? Now, okay, let me ask you a different way. Haya, wacha tena ule swali ile kwa njia nyingine. Do you have bad dreams? How many people here have bad dreams? Ni wangapi? Enda mjaelewa hilo. Ni wangapi kati yenu hapa ambao ukilala huwa unaota ndoto mbaya tu? Then you have bad dreams now. Can you raise your hand? How many have bad dreams? Hakuna mimi nimeota kibaya leo. Na nyinyi mjaota. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Then you have bad dreams. Sio siku zote lakini kuna wakati unaweza ota. Wote ndoto mbaya. 
Okay, raise your hand, keep your hand up. Inuam Kono. See, so many of you, bad dreams is showing that you are not happy inside you. Yani ndoto mbaya, zina ashiria kwa mana ni mwako wewe, hawisi kizwe, hauna furaha. In a bad dream, people beat you or yell at you. Katika hizo ndoto mbaya kwa mfano mtu, watu wana kuchapa, wengine wana kufokea. And you are running from danger. Una toroka hatari fulani. Because you have faced different kind of negative things. Uh, Different way people treat you negatively. Kwa sababu wewe una wakati mwingine wewe unawaza jinsi vile watu walivyo kutendea mabaya. Is it true? Ni kweli ama uo? And also let me ask you. Hebu pia niwaulize. How many of you feel happy the whole day long? All day long you feel happy or peaceful. Ni wangapi kati yetu vile tulivyo hivi? Ya kwamba wewe siku zako zote wewe umebaki tu mtu wa furaha na furaha na furaha au kasirishi hata dakika moja. How many of you? Yaani wewe ulibaki tu ulifurahishwa na watu kabisa na uko na furaha. Now I'll ask you a second question. Ana ulio swali la pili. How many of you throughout the day sometimes you say oh things are not so good. Oh I'm unhappy. Then from time to time this kind of feeling come back to you. Je, na ni wangapi kati yetu kuna wakati mwingine mambo yanakwenda senge mnengi. Unakaa unasema ai leo jamani siku imekuwa baya. Yaani leo ni matatizo yamezidi. Can you raise your hand if you sometimes have unhappy feelings? Now you you look around and you can see what can you see? Many people are unhappy. Kwa hivyo ina maana kwamba unapoangalia watu wengi hawaishi maisha ya furaha. Even though we have Jesus. Ijapokuwa tunaye Kristo Yesu. Because we live under the law too much. Kwa sababu tunaishi chini ya sheria zaidi. And live under accusation too much. Na tunaishi chini ya kuhukumika kila wakati. We ourselves accuse other people. Ya kwamba sisi hata tunawahukumu wengine. And people accuse us. Na wao wanatuhukumu. So many Christians live in a way and happy way. Kwa hivyo watu wanaishi maisha ambayo sio maisha ya furaha. So how can we change it? Tunaweza kubadilisha vipi? Can we change it? Je, tunaweza kubadilisha? We can change it. Tunaweza kubadilisha. But we need to realize what is happening inside us. Lakini lazima kugundue ni nini ambacho kinafanyika ndani mwako. Okay? Proverbs Proverbs 17:22. 17:22. Midhali. Midhali. Hakuna esi hapo. Ni midhali. <laughs> Midhali 17:17 mstari wa 22. Mliende shule gani? Midhali 17:22. A joyful heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A joyful heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Aha, moyo ulio na furaha unafanya vizuri kama dawa lakini lakini mifupa iliyobondeka roho iliyobondeka hukausha mifupa so when a person is joyful it's like medicine kwa hivyo mtu akiwa na furaha yeye ni kama dawa but a sad spirit a broken spirit would dry the body by dry the bone lakini roho iliyobondeka inakausha mifupa so negative emotions affect the whole person kwa hivyo yale mawazo kinyume yanaadhiri huyo mtu yeye kama yeye if you have met someone who are very very sad most of the time ukikutana mtu ambaye yeye anahuzunika kila wakati you notice that the skin is dry Yaani mtu ambaye anakaa katika huzuni uso wake umekunjamana na umekauka kabisa. They have headache and neck ache and back ache. Yaani kichwa kinamuuma mkono unauma hata kijipaka mafuta hametameti. Do you find that unhappy people have more sicknesses? Je, ushawaiona mtu kama huyo? But happy people they more energetic, right? Lakini watu ambao wana furaha wao wana msimko kila wakati. So do you want God to change you? Sio ungalipenda Mungu akubadilishe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this. Hebu niseme hili. Our thinking affect our feelings. Mawazo yetu ndio yanaoadhiri hisia zetu. Okay, say this with me. Hebu rudia mambo haya nyuma. Our thinking say. Mawazo yetu 
ndiyo yanayo adhiri hisia zetu rubia sasa so if we correct our thinking tunaporekebisha mawazo yetu our feelings can be corrected na hata hisia zetu zinaweza kurekebishwa i use an example natumia mfano if a christian always say if a Christian always says, kila saa kila kila siku kama mkristo tusema hivi, I have not been doing well. Sijakuwa nikifanya vizuri. People don't like what I do. Watu hawapendi kile ninachokifanya. No matter what I do is not to so good. So good. Chochote ninachokifanya sio kizuri. I feel in so many things. Ya kwamba mimi sasa nimeshindwa katika vitu vingi. Does this thinking affect his feeling? Je, mtu anapowaza hivyo, hayo mawazo yanaadhiri hisia zake? Yes, he won't be happy, right? So, for the first day when I was here, I talk about how to live in the love of God. So we need to change the thinking. Because many people have taught the Bible, but they are under the law themselves. So some teaching is always, always accusing the people. And the people say I'm not good. It's true they're not good. So they feel unhappy. Sasa wanahisi kwamba wanakaribia watu. I know you have weaknesses. Najua una udhaifu. I know you are unhappy sometimes. Najua hauna furaha wakati mwingine. But when God comes to you, lakini Mungu anapokuja kwako, He doesn't say, look at the bad things you have. Mungu hasemi angalia vitu vibaya ambavyo unavyo. Jesus will come to you and say, Yesu atakuja kwako na asemi. Don't worry, take heart, daughter or son. Usijali jipe moyo binti yangu au mwanangu. Don't worry. Ya kwamba usijali. If you have worries, come to me and I'll give you rest. Kama wewe una mizigo mizito njoo kwangu nami nitakupa pumziko. And I've been thinking about you all the time. Na nimekuwa nikikuwaza nikiwaza wewe kila wakati. Like a mother cannot forget the children. Jinsi vile mama hawezi akamsahau mwanae. So God is thinking about us all the time. Ndivyo vile Mungu anavyotuwaza kila siku. When God sees a sinner, Mungu anapomuona mtanadamu, he has compassion. Mungu anampenda. He knows this sinner is sick. Anajua huyu mtanadamu ni mgonjwa. He has something wrong in his life. shida katika maisha yake. Jesus does not just say, Yesu wa haji na kunyoshea vidole. You have a lot of bad things. Wewe una vitu vingi vibaya sana. Jesus knows that. Yesu anajua hayo. When the woman was caught in adultery, wakati yule mwanamke alifumaniwa katika uzinzi, Jesus did not say, Yesu hakusema, look at how terrible you are. Ona vile wewe ulivyo mbaya zaidi. But instead Jesus said, where are the people who accuse you? Lakini Yesu alimwambia hapo mwisho mwisho, na wale walio kuhukumu ama kushtaki wako wapi? And then he said, neither will I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Amen. Amen. So our God is happy to come to take away our burdens. He said, My burden is light, my yoke is easy. Because God is with you and give you strength. And also when you give a cup of cold water, God is very happy. Can you see that God is very positive? Is God very positive? But many people look at the Bible and just say, well, you have this problem, you have that problem. Now, it's true we have problems. We should repent. But we should tell people, the moment you repent, the whole heaven rejoices. The moment you come to God, God first comforts you and help you. Now this thinking from the word of God will help you to have positive thinking and to have positive feelings. Because the Bible says that, you know, that 
worry. All these things will, this, will dry up the bone. Manake manu na seba kuamba because the Bible knows that negative thinking and negative emotions will hurt us. Manake maandiko e mungu na leo kuamba unapokuwa na hisia kinyume mawazo kinyume itakuwa diriwewe. Now you look at two persons who, who two Christians who are old and who are very sick. Hebu angalia wakuriso wawili ambao ni waze na pia ni wagonjwa. And they know that the time is short now. One Christian might say, Well, I have served God all these years, but now I'm sick. And God doesn't help me, I'm going to die. But the other Christian says, I served God all these years. God remembers everything I've done. I will see God soon. And he'll say I'm a good and faithful servant. And I'm not afraid of death. So two Christians have different way of thinking and one is unhappy and one the other one is happy. Wakurisa wawili hawa wazee wanao takakufa wote wako na mawazo tofauti. Mmoja ako na mawazo mazuri mwingine ana mawazo mabaya. So we need to realize that our thinking affects our feelings. Kwa hivyo ni lazima ujue kwamba vile unavyowaza ndivyo inavyoathiri hisia zao. Many people wake up they say, I have a lot of things to do. Well, it's too much to do. It's hard to do it. And the people don't walk with me. It's too hard. If he start like that, he'll be unhappy right away. But when I wake up, I say thank God. God gives me a new day. We even when it rained very heavily this morning. I said, God, you have a way. I don't have to worry about it. It's your meeting. So, so I just relax. And thank God. Then no matter what happens, I start with a peaceful and joyful heart. So we realize that our thinking affects our feelings. Now when people serve God, if they always say, nobody changes, they don't listen to me, they're no good, the church doesn't grow, if he thinks like that, he will feel very negative about the ministry. But I always feel good about ministry. When we have applied the word of God in our lives, we have strength and joy and wisdom. And then you just said, I heard that uh, pastor Washington said, your pastor, and you said that, wow, this is very good teaching. But I give all glory to God. It's not me. I don't want to be proud at all. When I'm humble, I give all glory to God. God is happy. And he bless me. So I've made up my mind always to think God's way. Always believe that God can help. And then I see you change. Has it affected you, this teachings? So I hope you remember and apply it. Now for people who are unhappy, they have all reasons to be unhappy. 
Sababu zote za kutokuwa na furaha. It's true that many people did not treat them well. Ni ukweli kuna watu wengine ambao hawakuwatenda wema. They may be short of money. Kwa kwa mfano unaweza umekoswa hela. They may have health problems. Unaweza kuwa na matatizo. They may have relational problems. Unaweza kuwa na matatizo katika uhusiano. So when they look at all these things, unapoangalia mambo haya yote, they say I have no reason to be happy. Unasema kwamba mimi sina sababu yoyote ya kuwa na furaha. When we look at difficulties we don't have reason to be happy. Unapoingia katika vipindi vigumu, sisi mfanye ukoswe furaha. But God has promised us. Mungu ametuahidi that he will help us in yeah. times of need. Atatusaidia katika wakati wa shida. When we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Hapo tafuta kwamba kwanza ufalme wa mbinguni na haki ya Mungu na mambo mengine yote yataongezewa. Hebu niwaulize. How many of you have found God bless you in unexpected ways. Ni wangapi ambao umekuwa katika shida na ukapata msaada kwa Mungu na huku unatarajia kusaidika? Can you raise your hand? Ulikuwa kwenye matatizo, ukajisikia umesaidiwa tu. So thank God for that. Shukuru Mungu kwa hilo. So you find that God helps you, right? Kwa hivyo unatumia kwa Mungu anatusaidia. The Bible has said that too. Biblia inasema hivyo pia. God will take care of the sparrows. Mungu anaye watunza wale nyoni wa angani. And he, you are more precious than sparrows. Na wewe ni mtu wa dhamani sana kushinda wale nyoni wa angani. And we have found that he has helped us. Lakini tunapata kwamba Mungu pia anatusaidia. So we learn to trust in God. Kwa hivyo tujifundishe kumwamini Mungu. I have experience of you know in difficult a uh, financial situation too. Pia yeye huwa anakuwa na matatizo ya kifedha. But I keep believing God has a way. Lakini anaendelea kuamini Mungu ana njia. God will open the way. Mungu atafungua njia. I keep trusting in God. Ninaendelea kuamini Mungu. And I kept doing what I can do. Na ninaendelea kufanya kile ambacho tunaweza fanya. And I found that God provided for me for a period of time. Na ninaona kwamba Mungu ananipa fedha ambazo zitanikimu kwa kipindi fulani. And then I said God what will happen at the end in this period of time or maybe one year na mo anashukuru mungu kwa sababu mungu amemsaidia fedha ambazo zita zitamtosheleza mahitaji yake kwa kipindi cha mwaka mzima but before the year ends God opens another way na kabla hata huo mwaka hujaisha tena mungu anafungua njia zingine this another year tena mwaka mwingine and i said next year this time i want to know what will happen na sasa anaomba na kusema sasa hebu nataka kujua mwaka ujao nini nitakachofanya thank god before that years over God is another way. Na lakini anaposhukuru Mungu hata kabla huo mwaka hujafika tena Mungu amefungua njia. Is God faithful? Mungu ni wa mwaminifu. Is God faithful? Je, Mungu ni mwaminifu? Amen. Yes. So we believe instead of worrying, kwa hivyo tunaamini badala ya kufadhaika, we believe in God, tumwamini Mungu and have strength and joy na uwe na nguvu na furaha. When we also do our best in whatever we do. Unapofanya vizuri kuweka bidii kwa kile ambacho wewe unakifanya. Now you notice if you listen to my teaching, unaposikiliza mafundisho yangu. You notice they are not empty teachings. Utagundua kwamba sio mafundisho ambayo ni ya bure tu. It came from me applying the word of God. Yaani mafundisho haya yalikuja wakati alipokuwa akiliweka neno la Mungu katika matendo. I put a lot of effort into how to improve my messages. Yeye huwa anaweka bidii jinsi ya kuboresha jumbe zake. How to improve my ministry? Jinsi ya kuboresha huduma wake. So I trust in God at the same time I do my best. Anaamini Mungu na pia anajaribu kufanya bidii kile anachokifanya. And then God opens the way. Na Mungu anafungua njia. So when I'm facing difficult times. Kwa hivyo ninapopita katika vipindi vigumu. I say God you must have a way. Ninasema kwamba Mungu hapa una njia. And then I will have peace and joy. Na sasa yeye atakuwa na amani. So that is the thinking that affect my feelings. Kwa hivyo inamaanisha kwamba mawazo yake pia yanaadhibi hisia zake. But some people they just look at the bad people. Lakini watu wengi wanaangalia tu watu wabaya. And they look at the difficult situation. Na wanaangalia tu zile hali ngumu. And they look at that no one likes him. Na wanasema kwamba hakuna yote anayenipenda. Now why don't people like them? Mbona basi watu hawapendi? Many of these people complain a lot. Ni kwa sababu watu hawa hupenda kulalamika zaidi. I don't know if you have met people like this. Sijui kama ushawahi kutana na watu wanaopenda kulalamika. Some people came to me for help. Watu wengine wanamtia kwa msaada. When they talk on the phone they just keep saying this person is bad to me, that person is bad to me. Wanapompigia simu na mwambia mtu huyu amefanya hili, huyu akatenda hili, huyu akaongea hili. And they did not stop. 
Lakini hawakuacha. They didn't even wait for me to respond. Yaani hata hawampi muda wa yeye kuongea. They kept talking and talking. Yaani wao ni kuongea tu. He saw the negative words. Na maneno wanayoongea yote ni maneno kinyume yote. Do people like to talk to someone like that? Je, watu wanapenda ku kuzungumza na watu kwa njia hiyo? No one likes to talk to them. Hakuna yoyote ambaye angelipenda azungumziwe sampuli. So they have no friends. Kwa hivyo ina maana kwamba hauna marafiki. Now many people are in difficulties because of their own problems. Watu wako katika matatizo kwa sababu matatizo chanzo cha hayo matatizo ni wao wenyewe. And also because of how they think. Na pia ni kwa sababu ya vile wanavyowaza na kufikiri. But if we change our thinking lakini tunapobadilisha mfikiri yako. And we thank God for everything. Na tushukuru Mungu kwa kila kitu. And when we wake up tunapoamka asubuhi. Tunamsifu Mungu. Haleluya. Haleluya. And we can learn to laugh a lot too. Na unaweza jifundisha kucheka sana. Ha 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 ha
For different people, it's not an advantage. Aha, mambo ya kuonja onja, siyo mambo ya manufa. Unajua kisama kuonja onja? And it also gives the devil a foothold into our lives. Na hiyo pia inapena mwanya katika maisha ya mkristo wa maisha ya mkristo wa ibilisi kuingiria. And Satan will come to steal, kill, and destroy. Na shetana amekuja kuhua, kuharibu, na kufanya nini? And Galatians 6, 8. Wagalatia sita mstari wa nani? Wagalatia sita mstari wa nani? Whoever sows to please the first from the first will reap destruction. Yule anaye panda kwa kufraisha mwili katika jita ligo panda nivyo atakavyo vuna. Mpanda chomitu ndicho atakavyo vuna. Aya sasa. Okay, so if we sow to the flesh, follow our sinful nature, basi kama utapanda kwa tika dhambi kwa kufuata hali yako ya mwili, will reap destruction. Utavuna uwaribifu. I've seen people the whole life is destroyed. Nimeona maisha ya watu wengi ya kiaribika. I've seen minister lose their ministry. Nimeona wa udumu wa kipoteza uduma zao. Even go to prison. Hata wanashiko wanaenda gerezani. I know two pastors who went to prison because of adultery. Anajua watungaji wa wili ama walishikwa wakapelewa gerezani kwa sababu ya uzi ya... Ah, ah, siu zina. Kuoja oja. Uzizi. And then it can destroy the family relationship. Sasa hiyo pia ilija ikahadiri hata usianawa na familia. They cannot have a steady job. Hawawezi wakawa na kazi nzuri. They have no friends. Hawana marafiki. And nothing they do is good. Hakuna chochote ambacho wanakifanya ambacho ni chema. They are not blessed by God at all. Hawabarikiwi na mungu. So if we continue to sit, this can happen to us. But we trust God and love God and obey Him. And He bless our whole life. The point is, now we know sins are destructive. How do we overcome the sins? Now first we know that with the help from God, with God, everything is possible. God has victory. We don't have to submit to sins. And the way to overcome sins is to first believe that sins are destructive. Sins are worse than cancer. Zina ma ma madara makubwa kushina ugonjwa wa saratani. Now if someone told you if you eat this you will have cancer. Mungu akikwa mtu akikwambia kwamba ukila chakula hiki utakuwa na saratani. Do you see what it is? Je, utakula hicho chakula? And also some people told you if you take this drug, you know like meth, you have you heard of this drug meth, M E T H, that this drug when you take it everything in your body will fall apart. I've never heard of that. Okay, but just say that this drug, it's not a medicine, it's a drug that people take for fun. Kuna madao mengine ambayo mtu, mtu anameza yale, kuna vile vidoga mwaka mtu uneza meza, zile tunesema madao ya kulevia, mtu anameza alafu anasikia vizuri kabisa. Now people have this sickness, the eyes will all get black. Na kama mtu wakisha meza hiyo, ito kidonge, unapata macho yake yote ya mekua mekundu za hini. They lose teeth. Na sasa, okay, atakudanganya umeze usikie vizuri na kumbe hayo madawa ya nakufanya macho yako ya nakuwa meusi na ya vidonge hivyo vina kutoa meno mdomoni. They have sores over the body. Sasa hivyo vidonge vina kufanya, unaanza kuwa na uvimbe uvimbe. You search online M-E-T-H, meth, patients, you can see how terrible it looks. Yani unapoenda kwenye mtandao, alafu utafute jina na hilo dawa, watakupa na maelezo yake, utaona vile hiyo dawa ilipo kuwa alibifu za hivyo. And if you know that it's so bad, will you still take it? Na sasa ukisha kumbwa kwa mba dawa hii ni mbaya ama kidonge hiki kina madara, utaendelea ukimeza? No, you won't because you know you don't want your life to be destroyed. Hauta meza, manake unasema kwa mba hutaki maisha yako ya libiwe. But why do some people take meth? Basi ni kwa nini watu wengine bado wanatumia hizo vidongi? Because they were very lonely. Ni kwa sababu hawa watu wakona ukweke. And people say you take it, you have fun. Na sasa wengine wana wadanganya unapo meza hizo vidongi. And people say if you take it one time, you are addicted to it. 
Na wanasema kwamba hicho kidonge ukimeza mara moja sasa utakuwa na visa kwa sababu kwa sababu yani hizo vidonge vinavutia zaidi but it would destroy the whole body lakini vitaharibu mwili wako wote since I like that too na hata dhambi ziko hivyo for instance on a cell phone sometimes you can see pornography kwa mfano wale wanaopenda kutazama ule mchezo wa ngono kwa jisimu and many Christian think it doesn't matter Wakristo pia wako tu hapo umemkora macho wanaangalia kwenye simu hizo vitu wanasema haijalishi If you watch it God doesn't like you. Unapotazama hizo picha Mungu hakurahishwi. You won't have the blessing from God. Hautakuwa na baraka kutoka kwa Mungu. And your life will be ruined. Na maisha yako yataharibiwa. Sema amen. So we know it's destructive. Kwa hivyo unaelewa kwamba ni haribifu. Now how do we overcome sin? Tutashinda dhambi namna gani? First sin came in a thought. Ya kwanza dhambi zinakuja kwenye mawazo. For instance if this is someone who is not good kwa mfano hiyo uh, microphone ameshika ni mtu ambaye sio mzuri and a person says something unpleasant to you na huyo mtu sasa anazungumza mambo mabaya kuhusu and then in the thought will say he's a bad person i don't like him na sasa katika mawazo yako utasema huyo mtu ni mbaya simpendi and i hate him mimi ninamchukia na but some people keep thinking yes i hate him i hate him na sasa wewe wakati unasema hivyo hilo jambo linabao kwenye mawazo yako la kusema simpendi simpendi simpendi. Well, I was they say I want him to die. Alafu unasema ingekuwa bora hata afe. Now it's Christian we realize even if he's bad I don't have to take his sins. Lakini lazima mkristo ujue hata kama huyo mtu ni mbaya mimi sitaki kubeba mizigo zake za dhambi. I don't have to keep thinking negative thoughts. Sitaendelea kuanza haya mawazo yake katika mawazo yangu. I can have compassion on him. Naweza kuwa na upendo na yeye. And understand his person who has been hurt by many people. Hebu elewa mtu huyu ambaye ameadhiriwa na watu wengi. So we can bless him, pray for him, tumbariki alafu tumuombe and put down the anger. Na kuweka chini ya sira. So in the heart we change our thinking. Katika mawazo yetu tunabadilisha jinsi tunavyowaza. God will give it back to me. Mungu atarejeshea. It doesn't matter what he says. Ijalishi huyo mtu amesema nini. So inside we choose to say it doesn't matter. Ndani mwako hebu chagua kusema kwa haijalishi yale anayoyazungumza. Then I say I don't have to be angry. Yuseme kwamba sitaki kuwa na hasira. I can let it go. Ninaweza yaachilia yeye. I can turn around forget about him. Ninaweza angalia kando na nisiaone. Is God and of strength. Na nisifu Mungu na Mungu anipe nguvu. So the key to stop sins is in our mind. Kwa hivyo ufunguo wa kwanza kushinda dhambi iko katika mawazo yetu. Whenever we have any negative thoughts, wakati wote ambapo tuko na mawazo kinyume, immediately we stop it. Hapo unasimama unayasimamisha. Una If you see some pornography on a cell phone, unapoona zile picha mbaya katika simu yako. Some people say yeah, I enjoy it. Watu wengine wanasema hey nasikia vizuri nikiziona. Because they think it's enjoyable. Kwa sababu unafikiria kwamba ni nzuri. That's why we realize the most important person who can bless me is God. Lakini unapogundua kwamba mtu muhimu anayeweza kunibariki ni Mungu. I don't want to offend God. Na sitaki kumkosea Mungu. So we turn it off. Sasa utayaachilia. And I pray God pray to ask God to forgive me. Na utaomba ili Mungu akupe msamaha. And I put it down. Na nitayaachilia yaende. And then we can stop it right away. Na sasa unaweza kuachilia hapo hapo. Now sins goes from one step to another step. Yaani dhambi huwa inakuwa kuanzia ndogo ikipanda juu ingine ikipanuka zaidi. It starts with thinking inaanza kwa kuwaza and go to words inaenda katika maneno and go to action inaenda katika matendo and more action na matendo zaidi and more lies na sasa uongo mwingi more negative actions na matendo kinyume mengi. For instance Confano. If a Christian man likes another woman, likes another Christian man who's married, he likes another woman. Kama mkristo mwanaume anapompenda mke mwingine, and then in his mind he say she's better than my wife. Na sasa huyo jamaa anasema, "Eh jamani, yani huyo binti amerembeka kumshinda mke wangu." He didn't realize he was mistreating his wife. Yeye huyo mume hajui kwamba yeye ndiye alikuwa anamfanyia mabaya yule mkewe he just said my wife has changed from a happy girl now changed to a nagging woman anasema kwamba mke wangu siku hizi amebadilika hata hana furaha kabisa by the way when women get married if they don't get a love they will change from a happy girl to a nagging woman yani ni hivi mke anapoolewa na alikuwa mke wa furaha 
alafu anaingia katika ndoa ambayo haina furaha pia yeye atabadilika hata kuendelea kuwa na furaha ataanza kuishi maisha ya uzuni but many men did not realize that lakini wanaume wengi hawajagundua mambo haya this is young the wife wanampigia makelele wa kizazi don't listen to them hawasikilizi kabisa and the wife become more and more happy na sasa mke anakuwa mtu ambaye ana furaha so the first start with his bad relationship with the wife ya kwanza ilianza na uhusiano mbaya and then he found another woman na sasa akampata mke mwingine this woman was like his wife before they got married huyu mke ambaye amempata ana furaha tu jinsi vile yule wa kwanza alivyokuwa na furaha kabla ya kuolewa. The woman was very happy when she saw him. Yaani mke huyo alikuwa na furaha alipomuona. So this man had this thought. Well this woman is better than my wife. Sasa mwanaume ameshindwa kumtunza wake anaona mwingine anaona kwa hey, yule sasa ndo msumbuka. And then he will have more time to talk with this woman. Sasa ataanza kuwa na mazoea ya kuongea na huyu mwanamke ambaye amemuona mwingine. And when you the relationship is built up. Na sasa uhusiano unaanza kumea. And then at one point there's adultery. Na sasa unapata mambo ya uzinifu ya miingia. And then he could have children from sasa, this woman. Alafu inakuwa bahati mbaya anampatika mimba huyo mke mwingine. And then he might divorce his wife. Na sasa anaweza kumpa huyo wa kwanza talaka. So sin go from one sin to another sin. Kwa hivyo dhambi inamea kutoka kwa dhambi nyingine inamea hadi kwa ingine. But when we realize we are mistreating our spouse, lakini unapogundua kwamba unatesa mkeo au mmeo, mistreating a spouse is also sin. Na pia kuwatesa kutesa kutesana katika ndoa ni dhambi. We destroy our Christian life. Hiyo pia taribu maisha yetu ya Ukristo. And God is not happy with us. Na Mungu hana furaha na sisi. That's why I have shared with you about my marriage life with my wife. Yeye ame tayari jana alishiriki shuhuda zake kati yake na mke wake. I want to make her the happiest woman in the world. Yaani yeye anataka afanye mkewe awe mke wa furaha dunia nzima. And she's very happy with me. Na yeye ana furaha zaidi. And she's very supportive with me. Na yeye anamsaidia kabisa. And I enjoy the marriage. Na pia yeye anaburudika anasherekea kuwa katika hiyo ndoa. Anafurahia kuwa katika hiyo ndoa. But some men will say my wife is not like your wife wanaume wengine wanamwambia eh bwana na mke wangu mbona hayuko kama mke wako but i want to say if i mistreat my wife my wife would change also lakini anasema kwamba akija tu akaanza kumkosea mke wake mke wake pia atabadilika so to stop the sin first we realize our sins kwa hivyo kuacha dhambi ni lazima ugundue kwamba dhambi dhambi ipo we realize we're mistreating the wife unapomkosea mke wako And then we ask God to forgive us. Unaambia Mungu akusamehe. And then we try to be nice to the spouse. Unajifundisha kuwa mtu mzuri kwa eh katika ndoa. And then when any other women are very nice to us, na hata wake wengine wanapokuwa wazuri kwetu, we we'll say I have to keep a distance. Lazima usiwe nitakaa mbali na huyo nina wangu. I can have too much conversation with a woman. Usifanye mawasiliano mara kwa mara na huyo mke mwingine wa nje. I can only help the person spiritually. Naweza tu kumsaidia huyo bibi huyo mwanamke maisha ya kiroho. And then if I see that any woman has interest in me, na ninapoona kuna mwanamke mwingine ambaye ananifinyaga macho, I would distance the relationship. Mimi nitajiweka mbali na yeye. And if and always I tell people about my happy wife na yeye kila wakati huwa anaambia watu kuhusu mke wake wa furaha. So women around me knows know that. Kwa hivyo wanawake ambao wako karibu na yeye wanajua tu yeye na mke wake wanaishi maisha ya furaha. They won't do anything. Hivyo hawana nafikiria macho. So this is blocking sin to enter a life. Yaani hiyo inazuia dhambi kuingia katika maisha yake. It's still the five step to victory. Bado ni zile hatua tano za ushindi. What's the first step remember? Unakumbuka ya kwanza ilikuwa nini? You memorize this five steps to victory. Yaani mambo haya uyaweka kwenye kichwa uyawe mepesi ya kukumbuka kabisa. Zile hatua tano za ushindi ya kwanza ilikuwa gani? Eh? Furaha. First step is aware. Aware. Eh hautangue. First aware. Lazima utangue na ujue. That we have some negative thoughts. Ya kwamba kuna mawazo mengine kinyume. That we have some sinful thoughts. Ya kwamba kuna mawazo ambayo ni ya kidhambi. Now I want to say this every person would have some sinful thoughts. Nataka kusema hivi 
kila mmoja anaweza kuwa na mawazo ambayo ni ya kidhambi. While we are still on earth because of our sinful nature we have sinful thoughts. Kwa sababu tungali hapa duniani na sisi asili yetu na asili ya dhambi lazima utakuwa na mawazo kinyume. But the more we are in God, the less sinful thoughts we have. Lakini unapoendelea kuwa katika Kristo, hiyo mawazo kinyume yanaanza kupungua. The sinful thoughts will come and notice many times. Lakini mawazo kinyume yatakuja kama haujayatarajia yaje. I use an illustration. Anatumia mfano. A pastor prays for someone. Tungaje na muombea mtu? And this person was healed instantly. Na huyu mtu akapona. The sinful thought will come. Tena zile mawazo kinyume yatakuja. You are a great pastor. Wewe ni mtungaji mkubwa. You have a lot of power. Una nguvu nyingi. In me there can be pride. Hivyo inamaanisha kwamba unaweza unaweza kuwa na kiburisha. Simple thought will come and notice many times. Yaani haya mawazo kinyume yanakuja vipindi usivyovitarajia. But the more humble we are, lakini tunapoendelea kinyekea and the better we have the relationship with God, na tunajenga uhusiano wetu na Mungu, the less simple thought we have. Hivyo ndivyo mawazo kinyume yanapunguka. But it will still come and notice. Lakini bado itakuja kama haujayatua. So first aware ya kwanza lazima ujue. Number two, what is number two? Ya pili ilikuwa nini? Destructive. Destructive. Number three. Ya tatu ni nini? Bible. What does the Bible say? Okay. Biblia na sumu mzani. Number four. Ya nene? So pray, pray for forgiveness and strength. Omba kwa sababu ya msamaa na kwa sababu ya mungu. Number five. Ya tano. Choose to obey. Hebu uwe mtu wakuti. Okay, now I'm going to share with you some ways I overcome my sins. Anataka sasa yeye kutoa shuhuda zake nyinzi anavyo shida dami. One time there were a number of pastors in a group sharing. Kulikuwa na kipindi kimoja kilikuwa kikundi cha watungaji wanakuwa uwa. Some of these pastors have very good experience in ministry. How are you going to begin? Wow, when I was there for a while, I just not had the backup work at the time. And when they share, I was very happy. Na sasa walipoku wakitoa shuhuda zao yeye zikamkasirisha. And then there was one person who share na kuna mtu mmoja aliyetoa shuhuda. When he share my heart, I said something in my heart. Alipotoa shuhuda, yeye jamaa kaje yambi katika moyo wake. That was not anything great. What it did was to come in place. The moment I had this thought, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. That God says, It's me who changed him. Who are you to judge him? Wewe ni nani wa kumuhukumu? And your change was brought by me, by God. Na hata wewe kubadilishwa kwako kuniletwa na mimi Mungu. How can you be proud? Sasa mbona wewe unakuwa na person? Unakuwa na maringo na unadharau watu wengine. And then he said, say Lord, I'm sorry. Na akasema Mungu samahani nimekosa. I'm sorry that I have you know criticized him in the heart. Akamwambia Mungu jamani nimekosa. And I ask God to help me to really appreciate people's ministry. Akaomba mungu amsaidia ili nae akapate pia kusema maneno mazuri katika huduma za watu wengine. And to bless the ministry no matter how weak they are. Na kubariki huduma zingine ijapo kuwa ni daifu. One time I walked by a church. Siku moja alikuwa na tembea kando kando ya kanisa. This church was famous for rejecting the work, the work of the Holy Spirit. Na hili kanisa nilikuwa najulikana kwa sababu linapinga kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu. When I walk by the church I just have negative feelings. Na sasa alipokuwa akitembea kwenye kando kando ya kanisa yeye akawa na mawazo kinyume na hilo kanisa. And God spoke to me. Na Mungu akanisema akanenenea. I work in this church too. Hata mimi Mungu nafanya kazi kwenye hilo kanisa. I change the ways to live also. Pia ninabadilisha jinsi wanavyoishi. They may not follow the work of the Holy Spirit. Kuna uwezekano hawafuati kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu. But still I'm using them. Lakini bado mimi Mungu nawatumia. Immediately I repent. Hapo hapo akatubu. And I say God please bless this church. Akasema Mungu tafadhali bariki hii kanisa. Give them strength. Wape nguvu. And one time there was one woman 
I was I was at that time serving in a traditional denomination. Kuna wakati alipokuwa akifanya kazi ya uchungaji kwa kanisa la kitamaduni. After I experienced the Holy Spirit, alipopokea nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu, I brought many people to Christ in the church. Akawaleta watu wengi kwa Kristo. But there was one woman, lakini kulikuwa na mwanamke mmoja, not in this church but in the mother church. Lakini huyu mwanamke alikuwa anatoka kwa kanisa kubwa ambalo hili kanisa ndogo linaingia ndani. Who has determined to kick me out of the denomination? Na huyu mwanamke yeye mawazo yake yalikuwa kumtoa katika kanisa hili. She tried his first way, akajaribu njia yake ya kwanza, and she failed. Akashindwa. And then she tried another way. Akajaribu njia ya pili. She just said, "Well, you're not Follow this way. I just give you three months' salary, and then you leave. Aka mwambia kuamba kwa sababu we umekata kufata jiaze tu ni taku pamo shara miezi mita tu alafu we ni. There was no nothing. You know, he didn't. She didn't say anything wrong with me. Na hamu sema lolote ambalo lukando shida. She just said this is not our way. Ali mwambia tu yosiyo jiaze tu kulingana na na kulingana na katiba ya kanisa letu. At that time the church was growing very well. Lakini wakati huo kanisa lilikuwa lina, linakuwa katika viwango vikubwa sana. Many people in the church were crying. Watu wengi kanisani walikuwa wanalia. And I felt very very sad. Na nikahisi kwamba nimeshushwa roho ni mwezuri. When I thought about this woman a number of times. Alipokuwa akiwaza kuhusu huyu mwanamke kwa vipindi virefu. The thought came to me Wazo likamtia God would judge her Mungu atamhukumu But then the Holy Spirit convicted me Lakini Roho Mtakatifu akanenea katika moyo wangu Is God who judges Ni Mungu anayehukumu For me is to bless her Wewe kazi yako ni kumbariki So I said Lord please bless her according to her way Akamwambia Mungu mbariki kulingana na njia zake She is not open to the infilled Holy Spirit Yeye hajakuwa wazi kwa kujazwa na Roho Mtakatifu But according to how she believes help her to be faithful in that way Lakini kulingana na vile anavyofikiria Mungu msaidie akae mwaminifu katika hizo njia zake So that one day you say you are good and faithful servant Ya kwamba siku moja utamwambia kwamba umekuwa mtendakazi mzuri na mwaminifu So what I mean is, whenever any negative thoughts came into my mind, nina manisha kuamba wakati wazombaya na pokuja katika akili zangu. Immediately I realized it's destructive. Who are in a gunua kuamba hili ni aribifu. When we know it's destructive, and na pokuja kuamba ni aribifu. And we want blessings from God. Na tunataka baraka kutoka kwa mungu. We want to be used by God. Na tunataka chumikiwe na mungu. Then we can say no to the sin. Hapo naweza sema hapa na kwa choose to obey. Na una chagua kuti. So these are just some examples. Yeah, these are maybe five or two. Amen. Now, if you have, do you have any questions about handling negative thinking, emotions, and sins? Any questions? Je, kuna maswali yote kuhusu kusubiri ya dhambi na kusubiri ya isia kinyume? Let me ask you this question. Ebu ni wauli ni swali hili. Can you start to handle your sad feeling, your negative feeling, unhappy feeling? Now, that's those are sins. Je. Uko tayari kwanza kuadhibikia hisia zako kinyume mawazo yako kinyume saa hizi kwa sababu ni dhambi. Can you choose to be joyful now? Je, unaweza kuchagua kuishi maisha ya furaha sasa hivi? Let me tell you, joy doesn't come right away. Wacha nikwambie sio kama furaha itakuja kwa mpigo wakati huo. Let me tell you how it did. Hebu niwaambie jinsi nilivyofanya. Sometimes something may be unhappy. Wakati mwingine vitu vinavyonikasirisha. I say I want to put it down. Nasema nataka kuziweka chini. I want to trust in God to have joy. Nataka nimwamini Mungu ili niwe na furaha. Na ninapomsifu Mungu. But I found that the thing is still pressing on my heart. Lakini bado na hizi vitu bado zinanichoma katika moyo wangu. I found that our emotions are not easy to handle. Ninawapata kwamba hisia sio rahisi ya kushughulikia. So to keep loving God and believe that God is loving me. So kuendelea kumpenda Mungu na niamini kwamba Mungu anaendelea kunipenda. Keep trusting in God. Endelea kumwamini Mungu. And look at all the good things I've done for God. Na wewe uangalie yale matendo mema ambayo umemtendea Mungu. To say God has done this work in my life. Useme kwamba Mungu ametenda kazi hii katika maisha yako. And you use me. Na Mungu ataendelea kunitumia. Now I say this not to be proud. Na useme haya mambo ili kwa usiseme usifanye mambo haya kufanya uwe na kiburi. But I thank God for his work in my life lakini unashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ametenda katika maisha yako so I treasure my life kwa hivyo una 
I don't want to be burdened with the negative things Now let me share with you one feeling that has overwhelmed me for a long time. To let you know that, you know, I did not come out perfect. Because of the accusation of people in the past, I have, I have a lot of fear. The fear that people will accuse me and also a very heavy sense of responsibility. I always want to do more for God. I found that when I was washing dishes, because I was in a rush to finish washing dishes and do my work. Sometimes I found that I pressured my heart. Sometimes I found that I fear. And I kept convincing myself. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. What is required of a steward is that he's faithful. So it, for two, 1 Corinthians 4.2 So it said, I've been faithful to serve God. And God is happy with me. So I don't have to feel bad. And I don't have to feel pressure to do more. Now I want to do more. But I don't have to have pressure. And also, I don't have to worry about that accusation of people. Because God is happy with me. They cannot ruin my ministry. So I keep putting God. Keep putting down a negative thinking. Not to think about a negative thinking. And keep thinking that God is happy in heaven. Now, this thought is very important. God is standing there looking at me. He's in heaven and he's also here. He's happy with me. And I want to serve him. So he can be happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With time, this fear and this burden feeling go away. I want to say sometimes it's not easy. Do some of you have some fear or worry or burden in your heart? See, kuna wa, yetu kuna I want to say that I haven't met a person who said that he has no negative feelings. But if we handle it every day, treat ourselves nicely with the grace of God. Whenever we do anything for God, then we say, I thank God that I can do this for you. And you are happy with me. So I can be happy with myself. Okay? Do you think you can apply this teaching to yourself? Do you have any question? I hope you think and say, can I apply to myself? Now some of you may say, that's too hard, too hard. I want to say with God everything is possible. Amen. Amen. Okay. No no if no question, what I want to do is to reach you in a prayer.
to help you overcome this fear or worry or how you have been affected by people. Basi kama hakuna maswali anataka kuongoza katika maombi ili ujue jinsi unavyoweza kushinda dhambi na pia kushinda mawazo hisia. Please believe that God is loving us right now. Ebu amini kwamba Mungu anakupenda sasa hivi. Amen. Oh. Jesus. 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 Let me play, let me play. I am sorry, I'm 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 sorry, I